kind of liked that song. It had an awesome beat. Amen. Well, good morning, High Street. How is everyone today? All right, all right, on this crisp fall morning, amen. It is just a blessing to see each and every one of you. And of course, today is First Sunday, so we'll begin our service with communion. Does everyone have their elements? Does everyone have their elements? Amen. We have some in the front, some in the rear. Amen. We will wait while you get what you need. Choir, everyone has it up here? Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. Now, thanks to those up in the crow's nest, we have a new computer, but haven't had the opportunity Beginning first Sunday next month, we'll have the responsive readings on the screen. But don't have them this morning, so just be patient. Amen. Amen. Good to see everyone. So our communion service begins with an invitation. Amen. Imagine that. Christ inviting us to his table. Sounds like this. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Our confession and pardon, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, church. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant 
by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave it to you and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, church, he gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. It was in that upper room, church, that Jesus and his disciples, they were reclining, they were enjoying a meal. And he took the bread and he said, this is my body. Take and eat. Let us all eat together. And when the meal was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to his Father. And he said to the disciples, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Let us all drink together. God, we thank you for this meal that we've all partaken of. We ask that it would be a spiritual nourishment, a spiritual blessing for each and every one of us. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, can we have all the young people come down? The young people, come on down, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Take a load off of your feet. Awesome. How is everybody this week? Good. Good. Thumbs up. All right. I love your freckles. Oh, my gosh. They're so cute. All righty. Well, this week... In our Bible lesson, they talk about a fire. Has anybody ever been or been around a fire or a campfire? Some people? Okay, if you have, put your hand up just so I know. Okay. Now, tell me, tell me some things about a fire. If I didn't know how to keep a fire going, what would I need to do? Put more wood on it. Oh, you guys are listening? Hope someone's writing this down. Put more wood. Yes, ma'am. Um, put, um, put, put more logs or sticks. That's right. Yes, sir. Put more fire. Put more fire. Okay, that's right. Got to make sure we got enough fire. Anybody else? 
So, hmm? Paper, okay, all right. Has anybody ever seen, like the fire looks like it's out, but if you have something and you fan it, anybody ever seen someone do that? What happens when you fan it? Take a guess. It starts to show. Amen. So if you fan the fire or if you fan those little embers, they're called, they can spark and ignite again. Okay? Now, I I'm going to change subjects just for a minute here, but it's related. So keep up with me, okay? Now, we sing this song called This Little Light of Mine. Anybody ever remember singing that? This little light of mine, I'm going to what? Uh -huh. I'm going to let it shine. That's right. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So I want us to think um, that God has placed not a fire, but some could call it a fire, but he's placed a little light inside of us. And just like that fire where we have to fan it or we have to add some more wood or sticks or logs to keep it going, sometimes we have to add some things or fan ourselves to make our light shine. So that is what we're talking about in our lesson, is letting our light shine and how we can do that. So next time you're thinking about a campfire, think about, ooh, Pastor Cynthia said, we have to fan that fire. We have to put some more logs on to make and let our light shine. Okay? But right now, before you go, we're going to sing. Okay, we're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. You know that. Of the church somewhere. Oh, there she is. There's Miss Edith. So thank you guys for coming down, and we'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye. Good morning. Glad to see everybody. I used to do this on a regular basis uh, years ago, and this is my first time back, so excuse the miscues, if there are any, that's for sure. So let's get on with it. The announcements, connection cards. Please fill out the connection cards located in the pew holders where you are seated. The connection cards help the church office with attendance, update addresses, and phone numbers, and any other information you would like to share. Once the cards are filled out, please place them in the offering plates, and that's in the back of the church. We are looking for volunteers for counters after our church morning service. Please sign up in the hallway if you are interested. 
Knitters and others, knitters and others will continue to meet throughout the fall on the first and third Wednesdays of each month. Our next meeting are October 5th and 19th at 10 o'clock in the library corner of the Commons. All are welcome to join our stitching and our fellowship. Once again, October 5th and 19th at 10 o'clock in the library. Sanctuary Series, we are excited to host our October Sanctuary Series concert next Sunday at uh, 3 o'clock here in the Sanctuary. Um, our beloved Chris Moore will return with an energizing presentation on exploring our Celtic musical heritage. Let's bring the community in. Please invite a friend, a neighbor, and a co-worker to enjoy this fine afternoon of music with you. And I think most of us know Chris Moore, and he'll, he'll do a terrific job there. Charge Conference, uh, Jim Wilson, our new uh, district superintendent, has asked um, High Street to host Clark County's regional church conference this year. Conference is uh, November 2nd at 6.30, and all are encouraged to attend. Charge Conference, November 2nd, 6.30. High Street, High Street Fall Cleanup is just around the corner, October 8th, 9 to 12, is a period when the volunteers can make the memberships proud to see what you have done inside and outside the church. Please sign up to be part of the fellowship and have coffee and donuts to start your day. We will see you there. That's uh, High Street Cleanup, October 8th, 9 to 12. You can't beat that Saturday morning with donuts and coffee. That's for sure. And now our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory.
The scripture lesson today, 2 Timothy, first chapter, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, was the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, and as an ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within and through the laying on my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relaying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began but it has now been revered through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a Herod, an apostle, and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed for I know that one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day when I have entrusted in him. Hold on to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. Please pray for us now and all the people on our list here. Marcella Thomason who is dealing with several serious health problems. Please pray for um, Martha Stevens and her family after the death of her son, Nathan. Sandy Schultz, that's Henrietta Bean's daughter, for recovery from heart surgery. Mary Pearl Kitchen, who lost her son, John. Rodney Engelbrecht, who has been moved to Oakwood for physical therapy. Nancy Blackwood, who is in hospice care. Um, I think this card takes place of the next one from Susan Rosen, you know, family. Linda Sampler, um, Susan's cousin Linda, passed away yesterday, wow, October 1st, after being taken off life support. Our prayers are with you. Uh, 
Continuing on here, um, of course, uh, our disaster in Florida with uh, Hurricane Storm Ian through the central part of Florida and up the East Coast, where people's lives will never be the same, probably. Continue praying for uh, Teresa Carnes, Paul Bates, his son Stephen, who is paralyzed, Barb and Andy Kopachetic, and uh, Gina Bocant, my sister in law, who had uh, surgery and is in a local hospital. All who have lost loved ones, all who are suffering. Our church, our church family, the staff, and our country. Now let us take a few moments, each and every one of us knows somebody that needs a special prayer. It's close to you. Somebody, uh, a neighbor, family, maybe you're going through something tough. Let's take a few moments to think about those people and pray. God of all ages, you have revered your grace in our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we wait patiently on your mercies, strengthen us to live in your justice. And with open hearts, we may hear and accomplish your will through Christ, who lights the way of life everlasting. Now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, Leah, with a hymn, let us break bread together. <laughs>
Amen. This is the portion of the service where we talk about offerings, and I'm just going to take a few liberties here. We are in a season of planning for the next year. Amen. How many know in the Bible it says write a vision, so write a plan. So we're in the season of beginning to plan and look for um, our direction for next year. So uh, in the coming weeks, you'll be hearing about our stewardship campaign. Amen. And stewardship is not just giving of your treasures, your money, amen, but it's also giving of your time and your talents. So um, be in prayer about what it is, what kind of commitment you're able to make, not just to the church, but firstly to God, amen. That's where it begins. It is our, our commitment to God, and then out of that commitment flows our commitment to our church house, to the community. Amen? So we have uh, tried to make it easy for those of you in the sanctuary, those of you who may be watching us from your home, and even those who are in another city. Amen? Uh, we've tried to make it easy for you to give of your treasures. We have offering plates in the front, in the rear, you are also able to mail in your offering. We're located at 230 East High Street, Springfield, Ohio, 45505. Amen. You can bring it into the church office. Our hours are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from 9 to 4, and Wednesday from 9 until 1. You're on our website. There is a place where you can donate your offering there, as well as if you have a smartphone, you can go to dollar sign High Street UMC and make your offering at Cash App. So we have again tried to make it easy for each and every one of you, and I just want to take this time to thank everyone for their faithfulness, for honoring those pledges. Amen. So why don't we pray and ask that God would bless us and give us wisdom as we begin to plan for next year. Let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this opportunity once again to give. God, we are in awe of the awesome work that you've called us to be a part of, God. We thank you for the ability to partner, to walk lockstep with you as you seek to reach out to people, not only in Springfield, but around the world. So God, help us to be mindful of all the gifts that you've deposited in within us. We thank you for this opportunity. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we all say, Amen. At this time, we'll have our choir sing a selection, Here is Bread. Amen.
Amen. And I'll just add a postscript. Remember, if you are so inclined to sing in the shower, you're welcome to sing in the choir. Amen. <laughs> they meet on Sunday mornings. Isn't that right, Miss Leah? Sunday morning. So you have an open invitation. Amen. And we thank the choir for their efforts. Amen. And we thank Leah too. Amen. I thank all of you. Amen. <laughs> Get all my thanks in there. <laughs> Amen. Won't you just join me as we go before the Lord in prayer? Dear God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We don't take this moment in time for granted. God, I ask that you would hide me behind your cross and fill me to overflow and forgive me of my sins that I might deliver a clear word, God, a life-changing word to your people. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, that we all say, Amen. Amen. In the time allotted me this morning, I'd like you to think on this thought. Focus on this. Focus on this. So we have this letter, this Second Timothy, that um, the author is reported to be Paul, amen. And Paul, as he writes this letter, finds himself waiting for execution, amen. So he knows that he, his time is drawing nigh, and, and it is about encouraging, it is about lifting up and and and. and uh, empowering those who will go on after him. So it, it opens up this letter with the normal salutations, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Now, we know that Paul had a job, amen. He was a tent maker, amen. So that was his, his uh, vocation in life, to make tents. But Paul was convinced and believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was an apostle of Christ. And, and it, it was because of this mandate that everywhere he went, he would uh, deliver the gospel, deliver the message of Christ. So he's writing this letter to Timothy, amen, and he's, uh, it's really a, 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 an, an endearing opening. He's saying, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. That's one thing that in our society that seems to be falling by the wayside, the wonderful art of letter writing. Amen. Um, and, and if you're so inclined, maybe there's someone you've not talked to, you've not reached out, perhaps you're separated from. Imagine how they might feel getting a good old-fashioned handwritten letter handwriting letters. So we have these normal salutations, and Paul is asking Timothy, someone that he considers to be a beloved child, to focus on several themes. Amen? So the first three verses, he is asking him to focus on family. Focus on family. He said, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Amen. How many of us are sitting right where we are today because of a praying grandma, because of a praying mother? Amen. On my way over here, I had to remind myself because as I say each and every week, I first begin to preach to myself and I'm mindful of all the lessons, all the memories, all the things that my own 
grandmother and my own grandmother instilled in me. And I can remember, um, I guess it's maybe four to five years, the first Sunday in October um, that my mom passed away. But prior to that, she, she didn't write me a letter, but she made it a point of, of giving marching orders to each of the people in her life. And she looked at me and she said to me, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. I will never, ever forget that. And I'll take it with me and try to model that and exemplify that with all the people that I come into contact with. A little thing of saying thanks goes a long way, church. A long way. Thank you, she said to me. She told my youngest son, she said, now you, you take care of that baby. You take care of that baby. We traveled two months um, earlier than from her death, and we went to Little Washington, PA, and she got to see the then youngest member of the family. And when we got home that night, it was a turnaround trip, and when we got home, uh, she said, I'm so glad that I got to see that baby. She knew that her time was ending, and this was something important to, to her, to see this baby, to hold this baby, although he screamed and hollered <laughs> the entire time she had him. But I want you to remember, what are those nuggets, what are those jewels that your mother and your grandmother deposited in you that if you stop and think about it, they have shaped you in some tremendous ways. They have given you backbone to go walk through some situations that you weren't even sure that you could, could, could man, maneuver and go through. Those, those nuggets, those pearls that keep you to this very day. And once you remember them, you need to think about how you can pass it on. How can you share with your granddaughter or your grandsons or your nieces or nephews or maybe the little kid that's down the street that always seems to come by your house, whomever it is, how are you able to pass on those nuggets? Because we all have a sphere of influence, amen, that is circles around us. So who is it that God has placed in your circle that you you're able to share with, that you're able to lift them up. Paul wanted Timothy to focus on the family. This would have made Timothy to be a third generation Christian. Amen. We're talking about the early church, so these nuggets, these facts and, and dates are important. Next, Paul wanted Timothy to focus on the fire. If we look in verse 6, for this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. You heard me this morning talk to our, our young people about a fire. Amen? And um, Paul is using this as a metaphor for our faith. Now, the original word in the Greek, anazopureo, it's only used one time in the New Testament in this very chapter. Now, the main part of the word, zopureo, refers to embers in which the flame has subsided. You know, you've been at a campsite once or twice in your life, and the flat fire that was dancing and so alive eventually comes to a point where it's just glowing embers. Amen? Or maybe you were cooking on a grill, and you add that accelerant, your 
fire flames up, but then it's not until the fire dies down and the coals are, are, are gold with uh, white around them that it's ready to use. So that main part of the word zopureo refers to the embers in which the flame has subsided. But when you add before it the prefix ana in front of the word, it literally means kindle anew the flames on fire. So Paul wanted Timothy to know the light is within you. You're to go out. You're to talk about that light. You are to encourage people that they have to fan the fire, fan those embers that that light might dance around. The flame might dance around. In, in the language of the children, that light that was inside of you, this little light, I'm going to let it shine. One scholar translated this passage, I'm reminding you to shake off the ashes of the God-given fire that's in you. The God-given fire that's in you. The fire that doesn't have a retirement date. Amen. The fire that doesn't have a shelf date upon which it's no longer any good. God is reminding and asking us that we are to shake off. We're to, to do something to ignite that fire. Now, if we look at that passage, that verse 6, there's no reason, church, there's no reason for us to believe that Timothy's fire had gone out. Because if the fire was out, you can shake it, you can blow, you can even put new coals on there. But if the fire is out, it is out. But every fire needs repeated stirring and rearranging to keep it burning brightly. Our young people said sometimes you have to put new logs. You have to put more sticks on it. You have to do something in order to keep that fire going. So perhaps as Paul was telling Timothy to remember or focus on the fire, Maybe he was saying, you've got to do something. You've got to make some changes. You've got to do some rearranging. As Mr. Jordan said, you've got to shake, shake things up. If your devotional life that you hopefully have, if it's dull, maybe try something different. If your joy seems to have subsided due to the craziness of this world, maybe reach out to someone that you might talk to them, you might share with them that just by coming together, we gain strength from one another. Just shake off some ashes and get some new kindling. Paul was also asking Timothy to focus on no fear. I didn't know how to write that one. Focus on no fear. Verse 7, for God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. You know, we are housed in this earthly body, and from time to time, it's natural that in certain situations, in certain spaces and places, we may have a measure of fear. And, and believe me, there are some very good benefits from that can come out of fear. But Paul wanted Timothy to know that we are not created to operate on that fear. Why? Because God, God has given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love, and he has given us self-discipline. So because we have those three things, we don't have to operate under fear. We know that Christ has made a way. We know when we are feeling depleted that 
It's just one touch from the master's hand that can strengthen us. We know when we're depressed and um, lower than a snake's belly that it is God who can infuse us. He can give us the strength. He can lift our spirits. So because of a spirit of power, of love and self-discipline, we're able to walk this walk. We're able to meet all sorts of giants that come come our way with strength, with confidence. I don't know about you, church, but sometimes in my life, there's some situations that I don't know how I'm going to overcome. But if you take it to God in prayer, if you seek him, if you remember, for God did not give you a spirit of cowardice or a spirit of fear. Some translations read tim timidity timidity, amen, but if you remember that you are infused with power, love, and self-discipline, you're going to be all right. You're going to make it. You're going to be able to put one foot in front of the other and go forward. Paul wanted Timothy to focus on faith. He wanted him to know that he had been called, he had been set apart for such a time as this. And you need to know that God has created you, has shaped you, has given you those little idiosyncrasies that might sometimes get on somebody's nerve, truth be told, amen? But he has created and shaped you for such a time as this. You've had the experiences in life that have um, taught you some solid life lessons and shaped you in some incredible ways. You've walked through some dark spaces that you didn't even know how you were going to get out of it. You have but had someone to pour into you. Your grandmother, your, your grandfather, your parents have poured into you. You've even learned some lessons from your children. Imagine Imagine that. Amen. Imagine that. But you have been designed, created, one of a kind for such a time as this. So I would encourage you, church, focus on the family, the lessons that were poured into you that you might pour them into the next person. Focus on faith that has enabled you to walk this thing out. Focus on no fear. Amen? No fear. Because God has equipped you and empowered you to make it through even the roughest times. You're going to get through this. Whatever your this is. Amen? Whatever it is, God has designed you that you're going to do this. You're going to be successful. You're going to uh, um, walk out this life full of faith. That's what he was talking to Timothy about. And I believe it is a word for us today. So just imagine that instead of dear Timothy, it said, Dear Kathy, dear Miss Stickney, dear Michael Shantz, dear Grandma G, dear Mr. and Mrs. Bonarico, dear Miss Hilton, dear whomever and whatever your name is, fill it in. This is a letter for you as well. These are the things that we're called to focus on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please stand to your feet. <clears throat> Amen. I've been
benediction. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing. To the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all times and now and forever. Amen. Be encouraged.